In this video, I'm going to go over the master production scheduler. The master production scheduler is going to allow us to set forecast amounts for our manufactured products as well as their components. So let's go into our manufacturing app, click into configuration settings, and make sure we enable our master production scheduler. There's going to be three different options. We can select monthly, weekly, or daily. And this is going to be the time range in which we want to forecast items. For this demo, I'm going to do daily so we can clearly see how the master production scheduler takes into consideration lead times. So I'm going to set this to 30, and this is going to show us items for the next 30 days that we can forecast. Next thing I'm gonna do is go to our products and take a look at the products I have set up. I have one final product, which is a build material, a manufactured product with a build material, that consists of component one and component two. For component one, for component one and two, under purchase, we have vendor one and vendor two set with zero delivery lead time right now. We wanna make sure that we have a vendor set because we have a buy route set and the master production scheduler is going to take this vendor in order to create RFQs. Component two is set to vendor two. And for our final product, we manufacture it. So we have the manufacturing route set with no manufacturing lead time. So now if we go over to our master production scheduler, the first thing you want to do is set is uh, add a product. So we'll click add product. Now we're going to select final product and we're going to select the corresponding build material for that product. On the right, we have a safety stock target. So if you want to have a minimum in stock, Let's say that we need to produce 20 units, but we also want to have 20 as a safety stock, and the system is going to tell us to produce 40 units. We also have a minimum to replenish. So if we only need to produce five units, but our minimum is 25, the system will make sure that we meet our minimum to replenish. And then our maximum to replenish is defaulted to 1,000. And this is where you'll set your capacity. So if you can only produce 1,000 units a day, you might want to set your maximum replenish to 1,000, and the system will carry over the remaining amounts to um, the days ahead. So we'll click and save. And let's do a soft refresh here by clicking enter on the search bar. As you can see, the system automatically adds all of our components as well as our final product. Keep in mind, if you have a multi-level bomb, the system will only pull the top level bomb. So if we had a sub-assembly with multiple components, you would have to re-add that subassembly and select the corresponding build material for that subassembly. Now on the right, on the top, you have all the columns for June 13th. So today is June 12th. And if you look at the top, we have June 13th and then the 30 days after. You'll see a forecasted demand, and that is where you're going to enter the demand that you believe is correct for our final product. So if you think on June 13th, we're going to need 100 units of final product, you'll type in 100 under forecast demand. What happens as a result is an indirect demand forecast gets populated for all of its components. As you can see, component one is set to 100, component two is set to 200. And that's because our build material for final product consists of, per final product, it's going to be one component one and two component twos. So that gives us 100 and 200. Now, this is a very simple example of the master production scheduler. If we click replenish, what's going to happen is a manufacturing order for final product is going to be created and an RFQ for component one with the corresponding vendor and an RFQ for component two with the corresponding vendor. Before I do this, I want to actually add some lead times in so we can make it more realistic. So we'll set that back to zero and then we'll go into configurations and set some lead times. So if we go into our manufacturing configurations settings, we'll see on the right we have security lead times. So we can elect to schedule manufacturing orders earlier in order to avoid delays. And what's going this is going to do is say, if we have a product, let's say we set this to five days, it's going to create the manufacturing order five days in advance. That way you have time to look at it and plan ahead. So now just by selecting the manufacturing lead time, we can go back into the master production scheduler and we can set for June 18th, we can set 
you'd say that we need 100 units on June 18th. And what you'll notice is June 13th, component one and component two are now populated with amounts that we need to add. And you notice these boxes are in green and green means that we need to replenish these items and we have yet to replenish them. There are several other colors, including gray, orange, and red. Gray is any items that um, we produced the correct amount based on our forecast. And because we had no forecast here, we have zero as a uh, number of units that we need to procure or manufacture. If we go to the documentation for our master production schedule, we'll see what each one of these colors represents. So as we went over green and gray, so red is when we replenished, but the quantity was too high considering the current data. So if we ordered more than we needed, it will turn red. It will also turn orange if we produced or purchased less than what we needed. So we set 100 units here. Again, I don't want to click replenish yet because I want to adjust the lead time some more. So I'm going to set this to zero. Now, if we go into our inventory app, go to configuration settings. We also have the ability to set the same thing for our purchases. So we'll select a security lead time for purchase and we'll set this to five days. Now this is going to have the same effect. We'll be able to create our, the, the system will automatically generate those RFQs five days in advance. So instead of having something that's late, it'll say this needs to be purchased in the next five days in order for everything to be on time. So going back to our master production scheduler, we can go five days ahead of our final product. So if we go to June 23rd and we set 100 units for final product, we'll see that June 18th is the actual date that we need these units in in order to produce final product. But the system turned these items green because we need to replenish them now within that five day window in order for us to have a, enough time to actually confirm that purchase or that RFQ. So if I remove this June 23rd and wrote zero and I went to June 24th or even June 25th and I said 100 units, the system is not yet telling me to order. There's nothing green here because considering the five day lead time and the, or the five day security lead time, we're telling the system that we don't need to order until June 20, or we don't need to create those manu those RFQs until June 20th. So now again, let's complicate things a little bit further. We're going to go on the individual product level and set delivery lead time. So we'll go into component one and we'll give it a lead time under purchase. Let's say this is going to take two days to deliver to us. And now we can go back to our master production scheduler. We can go to June 25th and we'll set 100 units. And now we'll see the system only tells us to order component one today and component two can wait until two more days because we only have the security lead time on there. So if I click replenish now, we're going to see an RFQ created for component one. And then on June 20th, or not June 20th, um, I'm sorry, two days from now, this June 20th for component two will turn green. And then we'll generate the RFQ because we only have five days security lead time. So now we're going to click replenish and what that's going to do is create an RFQ for component one that is due in five days. So now let's go to our purchase and we see that for vendor one, we created an RFQ that's due in five days. And now you'll see the receipt date is actually 619. So we're expected to confirm this within five days. If it's the 12th, then on the 17th, we're going to confirm this and then we're going to receive the products on the 19th, two days after because of that delivery lead time. And then we'll have the products in time in order for us to generate our final product 
manufacturing order, which will be due in another five days from then. So it can get quite complicated, but it's really powerful in order to make sure that we schedule and have all of our items in stock, which is the main goal of our mass production scheduler. We wanna make sure that we can forecast accurately and then we can purchase the components needed in order to produce those goods on time to our customers. Keep in mind, if we go to our products, we can also set manufacturing lead times on the individual manufactured product. Under inventory, we can set a manufacturer lead time for the individual product. And if you have sub-assemblies, the final product is going to have the manufacturing lead time for this final product plus the sub-assembly. So if you have five days on the final product and another five days on the sub-assembly, it's going to be an additional five days of forecasting time. So I hope that was a good explanation of the mass production scheduler, a really powerful tool. A couple of other things to note under rows, we can see the actual demand for a product. We can see the actual replenishment for a product and we can see what's available to promise. So we've had extra goods that are not yet confirmed um, or used by any other manufacturing order or a confirmed sales order rather, then you'll be able to see that as well. If you look at your actual demand, we can see that we do not currently have any actual demand because there is no confirmed sales orders. If we have sub-assemblies, the sub-assembly is also going to get added here, as I mentioned earlier, and we're going to have an indirect amount, just as we see for component two. But we can also set a forecasted demand for the particular component. So if we have component two, where we need 200 units on June 20th, but we also want to have 100 in stock, maybe we sell component two separately from what we use in our final product, then we can also set that component's forecasted demand as well as the indirect demand. And the system is going to tell us the total amount of units that we should purchase. So for component two, we can add 100 here, and it's going to update to say that we need to purchase 300 units. The last thing I wanna mention is that we can actually import these products into the master production scheduler using Studio. So I'll quickly show you how that's done. If you wanted to, it's a little bit more advanced, but it's possible and it's useful if you have a lot of inventory items that you want to use the master production scheduler on. So if we go to Studio, we can go to Edit Menu. We can create a new menu item. And what we're going to do is enter MPS. And we're going to enter MRP.production.schedule. And this is going to be scheduled the production of products in the warehouse. So we'll confirm this, click Save. And now we'll go to our MPS. And we'll see that this is the form view for the corresponding products that we have on our master production scheduler. If we go to Views, we can enable the list view. We'll set this as the default. We'll click into it, and then we can add all of our existing fields that are required in order to import. So we can do our build, or let's do our product first. We have our product template. If you have variants, you wanna import your product product. If you have multiple warehouses, the MPS is per warehouse. So we can have our warehouse, we can have our fields that we've seen on our form view, so our maximum to replenish, our minimum to replenish. We'll also have our bill material for those items that have a bill material. We can have our safety stock target. And we can close this out and we'll see all the items that we created on our mass production scheduler. So again, if you're familiar with importing, we can click favorites, import records, and we we'll wanna make sure that we have all of these items. If we went to our products and created a new product, we'll just call it test, save, and we go to our master production scheduler and we added that test product and click save. If we go back to our MPS menu, that item that we just created, we'll see that test here. We can create right from here. And we can also import records as we would throughout our database. 
that was a brief introduction to the master production scheduler, a very powerful tool to plan out and forecast all of your products in your inventory. Specifically helpful when you have very complex lead times or long lead times. Um, it takes the burden away from you having to really understand or trying to schedule all the different lead times. Once you set them on a product level and have that security lead time, the system just tells you when to order and it will alert you when you don't have enough stock or if you purchase too much stock.